the world of audio can be a confusing mess. iFi, a big player in the high-end audio space, contacted me a few weeks ago about the new iFi GoLink dongle and it's made my life a lot simpler. It's a DAC, it's an amp, it's tiny. But is it really any better than just plugging my headphones to my computer or a cheap $10 dongle? Let's take a look. Okay, a quick intro for anyone who doesn't know a few terms that I'll be using. DAC is short for Digital to Analog Converter. It's what turns all of the ones and zeros from your computer into music. Your computer has a DAC and your phone has a DAC, but they're probably not all that great because of something called crosstalk, which is when electronic components interfere with each other. The iFi Go Link is designed to not do this crosstalk thing, so you're going to get a better sound quality in a lot of cases. Amp is short for amplifier, which is what it does. It amplifies the signal. That's because some headphones need a lot more power than others in order to actually sound good. The iFi Go Link is not just a DAC, it's also an amplifier. By default, the Go Link plugs into a USB-C port but if you don't have that available, this also comes with a USB-A and a lightning port converter. Speaking of which, if you are an Apple person, you're probably familiar with this other little dongle that Apple released a few years ago when they became courageous enough to Honestly, the Apple dongle isn't bad. It outputs a flat frequency response at 24 bit, 48 kilohertz with no distortion, and it's just 10 bucks, meaning that it can transmit clean, high quality sound on the cheap. But it's also not an app, just a DAC. And if you're using higher end headphones or something that requires more power, you will want that extra power because things will sound better, especially if you're listening to an even higher end source and you either like or really want to get into higher end headphones. Which makes me interested. Are you already into wire headphones? Are you just starting out? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I was talking earlier about high-end audio sources. If you're using music services like Tidal or Kobuz, you're probably familiar with terms like DSM, PCM, and MQA, since matching the format and bitrate impacts the way the music sounds. The iFi Go Link auto adjusts depending on the input and actually changes the color of the LED light to match. This means that the dongle can make sure to deliver even better sound on a per song basis than the Apple dongle. Second, I'm a big fan of the braided cable. It looks delicate, but it's not at least not any more delicate than something like the Apple dongles. Plus it has a bit more flexibility than the Apple ones. Third, I've actually taken to using this with my work computer since the iFi Go Link doesn't require any drivers and my job is where I do most of my listening. Fourth, the audio only goes one way. So if you're using this with a headset, the mic won't work. You'll need to use a separate microphone input. And finally, if you're finding this useful, do me a favor and click that like button. It'll really help the channel out. As for my devices, I use the Lenovo ThinkPad where I compare the audio jack and the iFi Go Link and an iPhone where I compare the Apple dongle to the iFi Go Link. Finally, for my music, I use Kobuz with the highest available settings. For my tests, I focused on For the First Time by Darius Rucker, Jack of Speed by Steely Dan, The Third Movement of Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto in E Minor, and Peppers and Onions by Tierra Whack. With all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. A couple of ground observations. In no case did I hear any sort of shift with the actual sound signature, meaning that I didn't get any warmer sound or more clarity. The iFi Go Length amp boosts sound across the board. This helps bring out some of the color if there's not enough power to drive that level of sensitivity, but it didn't make any of the headphones sound any warmer or more bass heavy, so keep that in mind. Starting with the lower end headphones, I have the Cos Porta Pro, the Truth Ear Critical Zero Red, and the Apple EarPods. The the biggest difference I heard was the volume. Everything was pushed louder. In some cases, this helped bring out some of the color and make the sound overall just more full, but it wasn't a huge difference. And if I wasn't A-B testing it critically, I wouldn't have noticed any sort of difference other than it being a bit louder for the volume level. In these cases, my recommendation would be to only get the iFi Go Link if you need something that you want to use on multiple devices with different connections, or if you want to scale up, or if you just want louder music on the go. Moving to the mid-tier, stuff under $200. I have the Sennheiser PC38X and the Truthier Hexa. This is where I actually started to hear some differences between the default sources and the iFi Go Link, although this was less evident with the Hexa than with the PC38X. The Hexa is already very clear and pretty easy to drive, so all the Go Link did was make them a little bit louder. When it came to the PC38X, there were some noticeable differences in sound, especially at higher volumes. The sound from the iFi was richer, better overall dynamics and better detail even at lower volumes. The thing is that it also has a bit of a muted, warmer sound anyway, so the sound with these was definitely just richer throughout, but not in any way that most people can immediately point out to, other than maybe saying that it sounds more full, especially when compared to the Apple dongle. And that's what the Go Link did. 
it made the sound richer and more satisfying throughout, even if it was subtle. So if you're in this area, my recommendation is to go ahead and spring for the iFi Go Link. The iFi's amp adds a good amount of body to the music because the drivers with these can translate a lot of the finer details of the music. And if you're using something with a higher impedance, then that's even more reason to pick the iFi Go Link up. Finally, going up to the big boys, both the Focal Clear and the Hi-Fi Mananda sounded much better than the default comparison, and that was entirely due to the additional power that this little dongle drives through its amp. With the clear, I got great bass representation, great brilliance and detail, and a much tighter, much more responsive sound. Plus, I got a lot more dynamic range. To me, this was especially noticeable during the violin concerto because both the brilliance of the high-flying violin and the resonance of the bass and the cellos were equally well represented. With the Ananda, it was a similar story, adding to this the fact that the planar drivers are just that much tighter than dynamic drivers. But the bass felt a bit less represented, which is mostly due to the Ananda's having less of a sub-bass extension than the clears. These also don't feel as full, but that's just the way these headphones sound. And as I said at the start of the section, the iFi Go Link doesn't change the sound or warm it up. It just boosts the signal. It just adds more power. So my recommendation there is that if you're using higher end headphones or more power hungry headphones, then unless you're plunking down the cash for either a Quest Style M15 or an iFi Griffin, you're not gonna get a better portable amp DAC than the iFi Go Link. In fact, for $60, the iFi Go Link is something I have no hesitations in recommending. Overall, if you're getting into wired headphones at all, and if you're coming from the mobile world especially, this should be your first purchase outside of the headphones or the IEMs themselves. Now, if you have wireless headphones, like a pair of Sony XM4s or XM5s, for example, buying this and using this with that, don't do that. that it, doesn't make any sense. If you're buying yourself a pair of wired headphones, then yeah, this makes absolute perfect sense. And if you're already into wired headphones, then I think you know exactly what I'm about to recommend. So thanks for watching.